Hi guys, welcome back. It's Shala and today we are creating some fun, fun pieces of ephemera. I have to stop and pause because this is the same day as Marguerite Miller Monday video when I'm recording this and I literally just updated or updated, uploaded an hour long video in less than five minutes you guys i cannot believe it so still kind of uh, reeling from this having to get a new computer last minute thing but oh my goodness i didn't realize the computer that i had you guys was over 10 years old that might explain why i had so many glitchy videos why things just weren't working um it was yeah i think i had some outdated technology but you know i did the best i could with it for quite a long time and i'm not gonna lie i'm really really happy at how quick that this computer is and yeah it's it's capabilities it's amazing a little bit of a hit to a pocketbook that i didn't need it but you know you got to do what you got to do sometimes so let's get started i hope you guys are in your crafty spaces and are doing well this idea not my idea this idea comes from a lovely lady i believe her name is eve or eva over at bohemian crafting i will like link her channel down below what she created was interactive pop-up vintage cabinet cards and it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant and i'm kind of kicking myself you guys because as a card maker or a previous card maker myself i don't know why i didn't think about doing this previously but i've taken that idea and i've kind of modified it to make it work for some pieces to go in the nature journals that i'm working on and i showed you those ones uh, on monday uh, that i'm working on so yeah six by six paper pads work great for this you guys single-sided double-sided doesn't matter so go ahead and pull those out because this will work for those really well i did use some tim holtz paper it's from the wallflower 12 by 12 paper pack i use these papers for a couple different reasons one the images are just perfect for what i want to use i like that they're double-sided and these actually were four six by six images you know how he does the big image on a 12 by 12 and then he recreates those images uh six by six four to a page um that's what these are but again use your six by six paper pads that you have can you use digitals for these of course you can you can use whatever papers you want you guys if you are using digitals try to print them out onto a heavier cardstock for this um you know a 60 pound is probably good uh, so yeah let's go ahead and get started I cut out the six by six let's show you the first one that I made just closed it up with some sorry silk uh, this is a label from Junk Journal Studios uh, entomology kit and then a label from Tracy Fox's labels she's got some amazing label sets you guys so those ones are those ones I really love to use over and over again so it made sense for me to buy those digitals because it's just stuff that i use over and over again again do you need to digitals absolutely not use whatever papers and ephemera bits you have make it your own uh, okay so i folded the six by six piece of cardstock in half decorated the front and when we open it up so she made pop-up vintage cards i made pop-up um, specimen cards so again most of the things that I'm using I'll try to remember to tell you where I got things but again not needed just if you're curious on where I got them this is I'll tell you okay so we open it up and look at this cute little bug he just pops out isn't that adorable oh I love that just hello, hello little bug now you might not be into bugs that's okay I made another one this time I closed it with some eyelets using the same six by six, um, not the exact same, but you know what I mean, using the six by six papers, did some decorating, used some eyelets, and this time it's a little bit different, but it's a butterfly. Isn't that great? Okay, so give you the rundown of these. Okay, so what did I do? This is double, the double-sided paper. So I have one here, we're gonna make one together, and it's just folded in half, okay? So these were the four pieces, okay, like that. 
cut them up and I'm going to make another one later on. But yeah, just fold it in half. I rounded the corners and inked it up. It's ready to go. The next thing, so on this one in particular, I used the specimen cards from Junk Journal Studio Entomology Kit. Again, not needing to use that because this one, I did not use that. But I just thought I would give it a try if it would work. Now this one I cut a little bit wonky, not a huge deal. And I only used this side of it, okay? I cut this side off. So here's the other side of it. Okay, I did back it on to some uh, tab sheets or tab paper. So I got a whole box of these for my office. They weren't using them. Asked me if I wanted them. I'm like, heck yes, I do. And they're a great weight for this project. So I've got like the kind of lightweight copy paper glued onto this tab paper just to give it a little bit more structure. Okay. Um, then what I did is I ran that through my embossing machine and I used this really cool embossing folder that is like type set type, you know, the typewriter keys or type. Yeah, it's called type set, I think, or type cast, whatever. You know what I mean? It's, it's the type typewriter thing. Um, now I did have a little bit of cracking. So when you go to run things through your embossing machine, probably take like a little bit of spray bottle just a little spray bottle and lightly mist your water your um cardstock or your paper with a little bit of water just a little bit you don't want to drench it but what it does is that helps to loosen up the fibers and i didn't do that on this one but it helps to loosen up the fibers in the paper that when you run it through your embossing machine it's not going to crack or it's not going to punch it out um you know or like cut it some embossing folders work really well and if you use two plates or too many plates or you know your sandwich isn't just right it's actually going to cut it rather than just emboss it the water will help that so just keep that in mind uh, i did find a really cool tool at the uh, thrift shop and it's this little thing. I've never seen this before, but I got this brand new for like $2.99. And so my first circle that I tried cutting out, you know, it wasn't, wasn't the best. But you take this little guy, you take it off. There's a the little blade there. You want to be careful because that's pretty sharp. You put it down, you press the blade, and then you just kind of go, you can move in whatever direction you want, circles, what have you. So I was playing around with this for three bucks. Dude, I couldn't pass that up. That was a good deal. So yeah, I thought I would give it a go. Didn't do great on the first pass, but the second one worked well. So um, that's what I used to cut that out. Do you need that? Absolutely not. You're going to use whatever you have. So whether that be just taking a craft knife and cutting around the circle, using your scissors to cut out, maybe you have like a really big hole punch. I don't have that big of a hole punch, but you can definitely use that. And you can also use your metal dies. So I have on this one, it's more of an oval, okay? And I used, what are these? They're called framelits. I've got them kind of dumped all over here. A Sizzix framelits by Stephanie Barnard. And uh, I just use these. Can't remember which particular one. Sorry, they're all kind of falling all over. I think it was like this one I used. So yeah, just use your die cuts. You can use a square, a circle, an oval, whatever shape you want. Now, the one thing that I discovered is the image that you're using. And so you guys kind of saw this bird in the last video. The image that you're using is kind of important. So the beetle, so this was the first one I made. Oh, and I should mention this paper in the background that I glued on is from Junk Journal Studio Essentials Kit. I just had it laying around and then some more labels. Okay, so the this you want to be on um, copy paper weight or a little bit thicker. You don't want it too, too thick, whatever image you use. And it's kind of important to remember that your image ideally should be taller than it is wide okay that kind of comes into play and um, add some pieces Ugh. when my computer died everything kind of went haywire and i had to kind of throw stuff all over the place so i could get my new computer set up quickly but do i have 
had cut out some more butterflies. I can't find them. I'm so sorry, you guys. Anyways, this particular image is wider than this piece that I cut out. Okay, so this piece in particular, this middle piece, is about three inches. So I had to do this one a little bit differently. I could not fold it the same way that I folded my beetle because it's wider than it is tall. So I just kind of folded the wings um, in such a way that it folded up into the specimen card, um, but it doesn't necessarily pop out at you like this guy does. This guy kind of pops out the window, right? Okay. Uh, where do we want to go from here? What do I want to tell you? Well, um, maybe we'll just go ahead and make one together and I'll kind of step you through what I mean. This is probably more of an intermediate project, so just keep that in mind. Okay, let's get started here. Um, I have this image here. I'm going to use this flower. I think that will kind of mimics the flower that's on here and I think that'll be cute. I'm going to use a piece of hanging file folder instead of the specimen card. Okay, and I'm going to use a die. Um, okay, so I've got this folded in half. Uh, what we want to do is you can back this yeah, I think we'll have to back it. We'll have to do the same thing that we did in this, right? So we're actually, it looks like this is all one piece, but this piece back here is actually cut out, okay? It's separate from this. It looks like it's all connected, but it's not. If you look inside, can you see there where it's cut? Okay, and that just gives us that illusion that everything is kind of one piece. So I am just going to quickly pause oh no do i need to pause no i don't think i do i think can i use this no that's not gonna be big enough i might have to pause just so i can find i didn't pre-plan a piece that i wanted to use back there i was all excited that my computer was working again so what i will do is oh ding um yeah i'm gonna give you guys a quick pause and then i will be back with the piece of paper that i need Okay, so I found a piece of paper, a scrap piece of paper that will work. It's big enough. I actually have to cut it down. Um, yeah, just some an, an interesting piece. And this, you'll want to do this in particular if your backside is like plain white. If you're using a single-sided, you want to do something to kind of decorate it up um, as well. This is going to help pop your piece out. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and... Um, this insert piece, so this is this piece, it needs to be wider than your image, okay? Uh, that's super important because again, this one, my image was wider than the piece, so I had to kind of alter the way I made it work. Um, so you have this piece, so this one in particular is six high and three wide for this image, okay? Uh, I will likely go ahead and stamp this up. Maybe we'll do that together. Let's just go ahead and corner round like this. Again, this piece can be, I'm using just a hanging file folder. You can use just like regular craft card stock, whatever you have in hand, uh, you know, one of these specimen cards whatever it doesn't matter uh, colored card stock works just whatever makes you happy um there's my little piece so this is just my scrap stamping and let's go ahead and pull out our tim holtz or i'm going to pull out my tim holtz field notes because i really like that set use whatever stamps you have Ooh, that one kind of got a little bent that makes me sad but I need a block. Let's go ahead and use this one. Is it going to stick? No. Okay, so when these stop sticking or if they get to a point where, you know, you've mushed them like I have, there's a couple different ways you can get them to stick. One is just use a little bit of water. Pat off the excess. And there we go. It sticks. If that doesn't work, 
pull out your trusty uhu, give it a little gluey gluey and then stick it on because it will then you can take it off and clean clean it um, to get that glue off okay i think i'm going to use this has a little bit of oops now it's got water on it a little bit of a slick surface i am going to use my stays on for this you can use whatever your favorite black ink is um, just to be safe i want to use stays on now stays on will stain your stamps. Don't get upset about that. That means you've used them and loved them. I used to be very meticulous in cleaning my stamps to perfection after using them. Then I realized that's crazy. It's not going to hurt them. In fact, the more ink you have on your stamps, sometimes the better they perform. Of course, you're going to get build up and you'll want to wipe them or you know get the excess off, but don't worry about trying to get them back to factory perfect. Okay. So just going ahead and stamping. Hold it for a couple seconds. Give that ink some time to absorb into that paper. Boop, there we go. And then I'll just, on my piece of paper, stamp off. I will use this piece of paper after on a different project. Use it as like collage or what have you. I like this butterfly. Let's put that one. Maybe here. Again, having your image go off the page a little bit is good as well. You don't want everything to look like it's perfectly in there, right? You want some items kind of going over the edge. Um, let's try this one. Maybe this one will make it all go on there. It's a little crooked, but that's fine. Okay, I'm just trying to fill up with some bigger images and then I'll come back in afterwards with some smaller ones to fill in any gaps that we might have. And it's not like, obviously you can't totally see it there. If I hold it up, you'll see it. Again, it's just something in the background just to give a little bit of interest. You don't have to necessarily read every single word that's going on um, that's kind of a cool one that would fit right here on the bottom that okay don't need some numbers Ooh, that's just going to fit Again, if it hangs over the edge, that's not a big deal either. That's got a lot of ink on that one. Okay. Corresponding order. Maybe put that up here. Again, the stamping does not have to make sense. It's just something for interest. Maybe that right there. Did you guys, or are you guys, anybody watching Bridgerton? Did you watch Bridgerton? I like totally binged the second part of season three. What a show. Let me tell you, that Shonda Rhimes, she's got a good thing going on. Um, maybe I'll put this one right here. I uh, I felt like it was kind of rushed. I don't want to give anything away if you haven't seen it yet, but I did feel like it was a little bit the last few... Um, what am I doing here? The last few episodes kind of seemed a bit rushed to me but it was awesome it was so good and they're coming out with season four which i mean they kind of have to because i need to know what happens to everybody else in particular i'm very fond of eloise so i want to know let's use this one i want to know where they're going to do a story about her she'll be the next character to kind of apparently they're books right i mean that makes sense now i need to go get them and read them Okay, 
I know this is taking a bit of time. I'm sorry, but it's so worth it. You know what? And we can even go sideways with these. You don't always have to be... Oh, that didn't really work, but that's okay. They don't always have to be going in the proper... proper direction. Shimmer cleft. That's too big. Ooh, buzz buzz. What do we got? Oh, more motivation. Hmm. Mm. This one's kind of cool. A little ledger. Okay. We could just do kind of like a little blank label thing here. There. Again, doesn't have to make sense. Okay, let's put this back. Try not to mush any of my stamps this time. Get better stamp mama and take care of them a little better. Because they's not cheap, right? Okay. All right, let's give us some motivation. What is our motivation? Be stronger. Oh, no, okay. Some people come into our lives and quickly go. Some stay for a while, leave footprints on our heart, and we are never ever the same. Lovely. Okay. So our next bit of business that we need to do is get that circle punched out. I do want to mark the middle of this because we will have to score. So this is three. So one and a half inches is what we're going to score at. Okay, one and a half. Like that. And then I'm going to fold it this way, okay? Because that's the way it's going to fold in our little specimen bit. So now I know where my center is. Is that going to fit through? It should. Okay. Now let's put this I need my little magic mat. Put this down and of course I want to ideally center this about there. Just use some light tack washi tape to hold that in. Come on. And then I will run it through my die cut machine. I have a Gemini Junior and I have a, I guess it's like a Sizzix or Big Shot or whatever you want to call it. I like my Gemini Junior um, for this, but you guys use whatever you have, whatever works for you. And in there, I do need this, though. I think this is the good sandwich for my machine. Let's try it. Nope. Too thick. Too thick. I do need a little bit of a wedge in there. Let's try that again. There we go, that works a lot better. Okay, so that, yep, cut all the way through, perfect. I don't like to undo this until I've made sure it's cut all the way through on the back. Now that I know that it has, carefully remove our die. And I will 100% keep this and use it for another project of some sort. Okay. Carefully, I don't want to rip it. Sometimes when you put it through the die cut machine, it squishes that adhesive and that tape in. 
and um, even though it's low tack it just kind of presses it in and can rip up your your cardstock or your paper so you do want to be careful removing it just in case this stuff away so we've got that done now this piece here what we need to do is we're going to take this and we want it to be the same height so grab my pencil and my ruler and actually works perfectly to be about this line here that's where i'm going to cut it i want about quarter of an inch to an inch on either side because that forms this part here and that's folded so do about a quarter of an inch on this side half an inch to quarter of an inch let's do let's do half an inch i feel like that is just a bit of a safer number half an inch is about there well actually it goes to about that line there so let's do that we'll use the lines that are already on this little ledger piece to our advantage and trying to line up and then about the same on this side again it doesn't have to be exact measurements just ideally in the general vicinity of of that <laughs> okay let's use oops let's throw some stuff around i want this trimmer let's pick my tiny one back up all right so we're going to cut it here like that we'll save that in the old scrap pile i want to Trim that white off. Trim the top off. And then there is our line there. So yeah, that's about four inches. I'm gonna do it about four inches. And then another scrap piece. Uh, da, 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 da. let's use our okay put that away so now what we need to do is we're going to take this piece again we want about a half an inch to an inch on either side I guess I have about a yeah a half an inch on either side that works out well going to line this up and then I'm going to lightly trace my circle okay we can erase that later it just helps identify um, where the the circle is or the opening is and where we need to kind of cut out a um, cut out this back piece I don't know if you can see that but that's that back piece down in there so we're just going to make i'm going to utilize the lines on this ledger again so i'm going to go about here i think we'll cut about here and i'm gonna go let's try and line that up a little bit now we don't need it too too much but about yeah about a quarter quarter of an inch maybe on either side again doesn't have to be super exact at least I'm not doing it super exact you can be a little more particular than me if you want and we want it to be a little bit higher and a little bit lower I did not go low enough on here I was all excited that there was a line there but that's not the line I want I want the next line there 
and there. And then this will be about here. Okay. Just kind of erase those lines just a bit. So now what I'm going to do is going to cut out that square. Okay, we don't need this oval anymore. That was just giving us a guide as to how big we needed to make our square. Now, not to worry if, if the pencil doesn't rub out completely because it's going to be behind our little pop-up image. Okay, I need my knife and my ruler. So now I'm just going to cut this square out. Just like that. And same thing here. Now you can use your um, Fisker's cutter like I have because you can actually see exactly how far you're going to cut. I just, this is easier for me. I just like doing it this way a little bit better. Like that. Again, I didn't cut perfectly on the lines that I drew, but those are really just there to give me a general idea of where I need to cut. Where to start and stop. There we go. A bit on the corners. Just kind of gently pull. And there we go. All right. So our next step is, let's just, I do want to remove these lines if I can. Not that they're going to be seen, like I said, but, you know, peace of mind for me. Oops. Okay. So this as well needs to get scorn, 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 that's not a word, scored in the middle and I probably should have done that before I cut it but that's okay so it's four inches wide which means I'm going to score it at two inches right like this careful because it is copy paper type weight paper you don't want to cut into it at all Okay, so we have those two pieces scored. Now, this one is going to fold in like this. Okay, that gets folded like that. And this actually is going to get folded the other way in half. You don't even need a scoreboard. You can just fold it in half each piece. I just like to use my scoreboard. Okay, more or less in half, like that, and like that. All right, now we lay this in here, and I'm going to use a paper clip because. I need to make sure, got a little fun one there, I need to make sure that um, the corners, the corners, the folds, the folds, yeah, that's the word, the folds are going to line up exactly where the other one is on the cardstock underneath. And this is just going to tell us really where we're gluing the middle piece right now. Hopefully this is all making sense to you. Again, I will link the original video down below if this is all just too confusing. Okay, so kind of holding it there, making sure it is in the corner or in that, in that corner, in that fold properly. And I'll just use good old glue stick. Okay, and 
some glue. Make sure it's tucked in there and then fold it over. And then we can easily glue the other side. Just like that. Making sure that it folds and opens nicely. Yes, okay. Wonderful. Now, our next piece is this guy and this guy together. So again, we have the folds on each of them and we need them to get glued together. Okay, so that it folds, can you see that? So I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on the back of this. I'm gonna end up getting glue all over my mat, but that's okay. Just like that, and I think maybe Yeah, this, some of it's not going to, is it going to cover all the way? No, but that's okay. All right, now we're going to very carefully glue this together so that those creases, so those folds line up perfectly. Like that and like that. Now I shouldn't have glued all over this piece. Not to worry, everything is fixable, except for when you glue it up. Did I glue it upside down? I did, I 100% just glued it upside down. Try not to do that. Oops. <laughs> Thank goodness it was glue stick and not art glitter glue. We would have been committed to that whole scenario. Okay, come on my friend, get in there. Oh, shoot. <laughs> because I had it upside down. Yeah, because I had it upside down when I traced it out, because I'm a silly billy, I now have this hanging over. That's okay. That is just fine. Watch. It's fixable. What am I looking for? My knife. It's fixable. Watch. Look what we can do. Just like this, cut that off. None the wiser. Like I said, most everything is fixable. And I keep these in here, these mistakes in here, just to show you that everybody makes mistakes and this is how you can fix it. Okay, so this back piece is a little bit sticky from that glue stick. This is where I like to use my embossing buddy. It's just like cornstarch or baby powder or something like that in here. And you just go over top of where you glued and it takes that stick away. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Just wipe that off though, because I don't like the feeling, that gritty feeling it leaves um, on my mat. But there we go. Okay. So we have that. Now we do need to put score lines on either side here because this will be folding as well. So I might have taken too much stick off. This is where I'm going to use my art glitter glue. Just, I'm just going crazy with the glue. I'm not putting it in the right spot today. <laughs> Let's do it this way. There we go. Okay. Need a little bit more glue on this side. Like that. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is you can either just fold these up 
I'm going to score just because I like to, I like to score. And we can do that right here, just like that. Right on the edge, whoops. Do the same thing on this side. Okay. And fold them up. Fold that up. And then now that, we're just gluing, when we go to put this in, we're just gluing these flaps. Okay, again, wanting to make sure that the, the um, creases line up or the folds line up. Okay, so before we get started with that, I'm just going to do a little bit of a cleanup and we're going to talk about the pop-up element. All right, now we're going to work with our little image piece. So playing around, there is a right way and a wrong way to fold these. Um, what you want is, an, like I said, an image that's ideally longer than it is wide. And you're going to fold that image in half, okay? Roughly in half. Obviously, it's not symmetrical, so it can't exactly be in half, but you're going to do your best. Then what you want to do is you want to take it and you want to fold the top like this down like that okay so like this and then you fold it like this and that's kind of creating a 90 degree angle if you can see that can you see how it's kind of a 90 degree angle there do not fold bottom up like that that's wrong because when you open it up you want to see a v you don't want an upside down v like is there okay so let's do this now you can use a scoreboard you know how i love my scoreboard and roughly find the middle and then score down and that's what i've done here i folded this okay going back to our little image so it's roughly folded in half i'm going to flip it over like this so that the opening is on the right hand side it doesn't I don't think it matters but I'm going to fold it so that the opening is on the right hand side and then I'm going to take this and just fold it down like that okay so it's like this then I'm going to fold it down like this to create that 90 degree angle then you want to kind of burnish this down Let's grab my bone folder and you're going to have to manipulate this just a wee bit to get it to work properly okay so then we're going to open it up like this and the fold is in a v there okay now what we need to do is we need to am i going to have enough room on that side i hope i am now we kind of need to fold it the other way it's going to fold that back on itself the other way just to reinforce that crease I'm going to open it up now take this part here and you're going to want to fold it so that these push out like that that one's pushing out that one's pushing out it's like that v it's pushing out and this pushes out as well this is where it gets a little tricky And I have to, hopefully this is going to work, you guys. So I had it like that. Fold it back on itself like that. Okay, here we go. We have the V like this. And I need this to fold forward like this. Okay, can you see that? See how I did that? So now the top part you're going to fold back on itself and push it forward. Is 
so that folds the other way this one you want the white showing because that's where you're going to glue and then when you open it's going to kind of pop out like this so I need to glue this here and here in order for the mechanism to work properly okay I know it's really really tedious to fold this it, it just you, you fold it like this you fold it down like that then you're going to open it up and basically you're going to you want the bottom piece to stay folded this way but you need the top piece to fold out like that and back kind of opposite on itself this is not the best image that I'm using right here to do this with it is tricky I like I said it's more of there we go it's more of a intermediate but I think I think you could do it oh this has got to come down on itself yeah this there we go it's just so tricky in the beginning to get it folded the right way but then once you have it it like pops open right okay now we need to get this guy glued in here so I haven't glued this down yet um you can also if this is blank you're going to go ahead and decorate this stamp it up grunge it up if you however you want to do it that's just fine um, I don't mind the, these papers so I think I'll leave it the way it is maybe I'll do some splatters later I'm not sure but ideally we're lining up our creases again our fold lines and this will just help indicate where this needs to go in order for it to work properly and I think about there is good okay so I'm going to kind of hold that there now again the pieces that i need to glue so i'm going to fold this in half because i need to make sure that i'm gluing it into the fold okay i need this to line up to that fold now i'm not gluing it all down i'm just gluing from that fold line and i know it's hard for you guys to see Let's see if i can ink it up a bit but there's this fold line here I'm going to glue underneath that fold there now it's just a little piece so let's see if we can make it work I'm gonna use art glitter glue for this not gluing the whole thing just that bottom portion from that fold line kind of down Just kind of closing it like that, pushing it in. Okay, and then again, we're going to glue just on the under part of that fold line. Doing the cabinet cards, I don't know if it might be easier depending on whatever people image you use. But I just thought it would be fun to try and use it with a specimen card. Okay, so the, this is where we kind of got to manipulate it a bit to get it to fold again the way we want it to. Like this. So there's our V fold right there. And that's going to fold together and kind of down. See how that works? See how it's folding in on itself like that? take some practice so don't get discouraged if the first couple times you do it it doesn't work perfectly so you're just going to play with it and the more you play with it the easier it is to maneuver and work around and then this guy simply again our creases get lined up it's super important that those folds are lined up for this mechanism to work properly and we're just gluing on these little folds okay otherwise the pop-up mechanism won't work okay so line it up just like that i'm going to use a paper clip again just use this one it's handy or you can use clips whatever you have just to hold that in place until I glue 
these little flaps down. A little bit tedious. A little, it could be, sure, it could be a little bit scary, but so worth it, you guys. Okay, just like that. And then this guy. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing and hopefully it makes sense. But I think if, you know, if you are having troubles, send me a message down below or again, watch um, the video that I link, the original video. She might do a better ex job explaining. I think she's German, so um, she does have an accent. Um, okay, and then this, uh, it's folding in right now, but what we're going to do is we're going to pop it out. Just get my finger underneath thick. We want it to fold the other way. Okay, so just pop it like that. See, like that. Woohoo. Our flower is going to fold down. Ooh, that. Yikes. That is hanging just a little bit over more than I want. That's okay. Not the end all be all. It is, this one is hanging out. The other ones lined up a little bit better, but at the end of the day, it's fine. It's, I'm not going to get too twisted up about it. So there we go. We open it up and our little flower pops up. Right? How cute is that? I think that's adorable. So now you can just go ahead and decorate it and figure out however it is that you want to close it. We could do eyelets, we could do sari silk, we could, I think we might need to do a label. Let's take a look. I have some words. My yes apparently is falling out. Let's put yes back in there. Don't think I want any words, or maybe I do. What do we have? I thought I had some flower phrases. I think I put like a flower phrase down here. What does it say? A picture is a poem without words. That could be cute. Without pictures, uh, that's all about pictures. I thought I had some about flowers. Um, live every day with intention is well with my soul just simply live that's actually not too bad beauty in everything hmm I really need my nails cut. Ugh. I feel like maybe over here, just simply live. I think that's okay. Let's do that. All right. Go ahead and ink this up. Now that is going to Have to fold about there. Let's use our tweezers for a little bit of assistance. Like that. And glue that down. I'm going to give that a minute to catch before I start manipulating the fold there. And on this side, something there botanical i think i really like that yeah let's just do that these are uh tracy fox labels if you're wondering uh, that's tea dye i don't want tea dye that's ground espresso vintage photo just like this Not upside down. Yeah, I think that'll look good there. Put 
glue, glue, glue. Okay. So this video is about an hour long, although it's not going to take you an hour to make these. I mean, it might your first time out. But that's okay. You'll get faster as you go about it. So yeah, I can ink up where you feel like you need to ink up. I didn't overly ink on this one. Um, I did ink up around the image. Gosh, I really like that. I love how cool that is. Just so cool. For this one, I am just going to do a simple closure. Mm, I think some green. Do we want to use green? Yeah, let's use some green. This is just like um, embroidery floss or thread or whatever you want to call it. Let's take some of that off. And do we want to do an eyelet? Let's do an eyelet closure again. Because those are easy and I think they're cool looking. Grab some eyelets. Again, you could do like a little Velcro flap tab, whatever, whatever you like. There's, there's no limitation to what you can do to make this your own. Take the idea and run with it, my friends. Oh, I actually had these ones too. Are there green ones in there? Maybe that's a little overkill. Yeah, we'll just stick with these. Okay, so I have nothing impeding here. I wanna make sure nothing impedes so that when I put my holes through, I'm not like punching anything in here. I'm not punching this little doohickey. And I'm just going to completely eyeball it. Maybe about there. Using my uh, 1 8 inch hole. Hole punch thing. Okay, slide that back. And now we attach these little doohickeys, eyelets, one at a time that oops get back in there my friend and there we go so what i like to do what i find works for me with this particular crocodile this is like a crocodile too i like to put the eyelet in underneath here is this little peg right so i try to put my eyelet and push up on that peg and then push it down. I don't try to balance it on here because if I try to balance it on here, it's going to push it up from the bottom and chances are my eyelet is going to fall out and it's going to aggravate me. So I line it up with that peg on the top. There we go. And then push down. Not exactly the way you absolutely have to do it. It just, that's what works for me. Okay, go ahead and, oh, I'm gonna need two of these is what I'm going to need. Let's cut another one. Got strings everywhere. There you are. And ideally we want the same length. Right, like that. And then honestly, this is just the simplest thing to loop through. If I can get my fingers to work. Yeah, I'm gonna have to file my nails down tonight, I think. It's causing me some difficulties. All right, and then we just simply feed it through that hole. I'm going to cheat and use my tweezers. They can kind of snag that and 
pull it through. Is that gonna work? Or am I gonna have to push it through? Let's push it through. That's a better way to go. There we go. And then just loop it around. I mean, you guys know how to do this. I'm not showing you anything new on this part, but. There we go. And same thing on the other side. Okay, we've got the string through. Now we're just going to simply fold it up. And tight. And we're done. A cute little pop-up specimen card for our journal. Again, it doesn't have to be a specimen card. You can totally do the cabinet card idea um, that Bohemian Crafting did, Eva. I think it's Eva over there. But yeah, I just thought these were so much fun. Again, you can totally emboss, decorate it however you see fit. Uh, but the biggest thing to do is if you're using an image like this, I want you to practice first. So print out some images or cut out some images that aren't necessarily the particular ones you want to use right off the bat, just in case you, you struggle like I did. Um, but yeah, the folding of it, again, I'm going to go over quickly one more time. So you're going to roughly fold in half with the right sides together. Then you're going to take the top and you're going to bend it so it comes down at a right angle. Okay, then from there, bend it back the other way again. That just will help you manipulate it later on. Then you're going to open it up and see if you can hold these together as you manipulate it so it pops forward. And because I have some folds here that aren't supposed to be there, it's giving me troubles, but then you fold that so it's right sides out and then the bottom part is going to be um, right sides together and then this is the part you glue and then this is the part that you glue and then when you glue it down you just manipulate it and then he'll pop open when you open your card all right i really hope that you guys enjoyed this video i sure enjoyed making them they were a lot of fun um, again if your image is wider than your little specimen piece there are ways to go about it so i just folded or yeah folded the little wings on these sides and then glued them here and then folded in the middle so it could fold up nicely all right but yeah they're just a blast to make so i hope you enjoyed today's video give it a try let me know down below what you think i'll link bohemian crafting's video down below and yeah thanks so much for hanging out with me today today guys and p.s i love you